the channel. Welcome if you are new. For those of you that are new, my name is Anna and this is At Home with Anna. Today we are creating a vignette in my living room. I talked to you guys about it in my spring decor haul and talked to you about the table that I got at a garage sale for $20. It was either $20 or $25, either way, very cheap. And my intention is to refinish that table um, and put it in my eventual library one day. But for now, I had a vision for my family room and I decided that I wanted to create a vignette with it, a little corner moment, if you will. And so I've been collecting things for it and I made a tablecloth. Now I am not a seamstress, I do not sew. <laughs> I don't even own a sew sewing machine. But where there's a will, there's a way. So what I did was I went out and first I tried to find a tablecloth that would fit because I wanted it to drape down to the ground. And it's rather a small table. It's not a proper dining room size table. Um, I do believe that it is an antique table um, and it's unfortunate that it was painted and modified. So um, they modified it by lowering it because the original owner of it wanted it to act like a desk and it's not even a desk height. So it is very unfortunate, but that's okay. It's okay, we're gonna, um, we're gonna work with it here in my house. So um, then I said, well, I have to make it. <laughs> so I did think about investing in a sewing machine, but I just don't do enough sewing to make that make sense. So I decided to go ahead and do the iron on hem stuff. And the way I put this together, let me tell you, <laughs> I just figured out the measurements that I needed. And the lady at Joanne's Fabric helped me figure out how many yards I needed. And I think I said in my thing that I paid $8.99 or $9.99 a yard and I got eight yards. I did get eight yards, but I don't think I paid that much because my total was like $34 for this fabric. So I must have got a, got it on sale or something. I'm not sure. But either way, it was only $34 for all eight yards. I wanted a fabric that was going to tie in with my pillows here. So I found the beautiful fabric and I laid it over the table and I cut it, leaving about an inch all all the way around and then I flipped it over and I just used the hem tape and ironed <laughs> it a hem to make the top and then I took the rest of the yardage and I kind of did the same thing I just so I just took it upside down right and I just laid it over the existing um, top that I made folded it over and ironed it like this all the way around and because it's an odd shape I had to do some gathering in spots without trying to make it very obvious so it's not perfect but it works and I love it so I have the finished product here and we are going to you can see it looks like I sewed it but I didn't and that is the beauty of using hem tape I threw away the container but this is the stuff that I I bought and it literally melts into glue when you put two pieces of fabric together. So um, it's not going to be safe to wash like in the washing machine and dry. Um, so I'm going to have to spot clean it. But my hopes is to find somebody that can make me a tablecloth in the future for it. But for now, this one's going to do. So um, anyways, we're going to set up a vignette right here. You see, I've got plenty of room for it. And I am very excited to do this. So let's go ahead and get started.
I want to mention the seam is off because I made the tablecloth directly on the table so I needed to pull it off and turn it around because I had the opposite sides on opposite ends if that makes any sense so I know if it's driving you crazy it is driving me crazy too <laughs> but just know I fix it but not until I'm done filming Almost forgot George we just placed him here he completed the vignette oh it looks beautiful you guys I just love it okay now we are going to make a wreath so here is what I've got I got some moss um, and I have all these little vintage plates that I collected and I don't know how many I'm going to use, but these are the ones that I selected. So we're going to hot glue, this is my plan anyways, hot glue these onto the wreath. And then in the voids, possibly, or the back, I'm not sure, hot glue moss. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to come together. And then we're going to use one of the two ribbons. I'm leaning more towards this one, oops, for a bow. We also have this one. I don't know, they both look really good, so we shall see. Here we go. So I have my hot glue. One of you guys, I was just reading comments, and one of you guys suggested, that, well, I have the E6000. I'm not sure if that's the one that you wanted me to use along with hot glue. I flipped that over all the hot glue landed on my finger and I thought I was pulling glue off but I was peeling skin off I got second-degree burns I believe um, I woke up this morning with bubbles <laughs> so it's taped up and protected with some burn cream this is just a reminder to be careful when working with hot glue and don't do what I did <laughs> Well, good morning so here we are the plates held up really good um, they dried overnight and they're on there really good but just to be on the safe side I'm still going to get the little plate hooks and I'm gonna put them on these and then I'm going to hot glue the plate hooks to the wire wreath form and the plate hooks the plate hooks will look like that on them so you won't be able to see them really but it doesn't matter if you do or not but I love how it turned out so far 
I'm playing with the ribbon. I haven't decided which one I want to use yet, if I want to use them both. But I'm going to make a bow. And I think I'm going to attach it underneath here to the wire and have it kind of fill in there. But to once I get the plate wire things on, I'm going to hot glue those and that dries. I'm going to take, to fill in these areas here, I'm going to take my moss and I'm going to hot glue it to these areas, you know, on the inside and just really fill it all in. I really want the plates to be the main attraction with, you know, but I'm I obviously I have to fill in these little areas here. So this is where we're at, but the glue worked. Um, I used the E6000 and hot glue and I burned myself really good. <laughs> I woke up this morning and they were all bubbles. So I put burn cream on and wrapped it really good to protect it. I'll be okay. But look how pretty it looks, you guys. I love it. So unique. Okay. Um, I got to get the wire racks so, or wire plate holders. So I'm going to do that. And then, and then I'll show you guys what she looks like. Okay, guys. I ordered my um, the plate hangers on Amazon. They will be here in the morning. So I'm going to go ahead and put the moss on, get that all done. And then all I have to do is attach the um, plate hooks. And then, um, you know, if I need to fill in any more, then I can do that. So, <clears throat> and then I can attach the bow as well. But my idea is, and I love this color of moss. This is the, um, it just is the moss collection. But I love the color of it. And I, j I love all these little wild ends. So, I'm just taking, gonna take little clumps like this and put some hot glue on it. I'm waiting for my hot glue. I'm gonna be very careful with my hot glue this time. And once I get it done from the front, I can always go into the back and, you know, secure it even further. Just like that. And if you don't like these sticking up, which I actually do, I think, I think, right now I do, I can change my mind. Um, you can always clip, clip it off with scissors, so. Um, I'm just gonna continue tucking it in and gluing it. And as I turn it and I can see in these areas here, I'll do the same. That way I have equal, uh, you know, moss all the way. I do want to mention you can buy an already made, you know, green wreath. They have the ones that look like moss, or you could use any green wreath that you'd like for this project. I personally love the whimsical look of um, the moss being like, you know, coming out. And, and you certainly could do that by adding more moss to an already made wreath as well. Um, which might be a lot easier than what I'm doing here. But uh, I just like to have control of every aspect of my crafts. And um, I love the way that this looks. It looks exactly the way I envisioned it in my mind. I looked at several inspiration pictures and a lot of them were either not done enough or they were overdone in my opinion um, for what I was looking for in my kitchen. So. I love having the control over every aspect of my crab project. So that is what this does for me. You, on the other hand, may find an easier way and that's a beautiful thing, but, um, but I love the whimsy of the moss, you know, peeking out um, from around the plates. I found it easier to flip the wreath over to um, add the moss to the other side to hide the wires so that when it's hanging, you're not seeing all of the naked wires on the interior of the wreath. So I took this opportunity to go ahead and flip it over and cover all around the interior wire so that you're not able to see it. And the top ones are covered from the front, if that makes any sense.
Here she is, looking really good. I got it all tucked in. Definitely do it from the back side. If you're gonna use this process, do it from the back side. Couple of, um, I mean, there's a couple of areas like this that's sticking out, and I haven't decided if I wanna cut that off or not, because I really do love the wild look. So um, I just think it looks so whimsical to have that peeking out from behind. So I'm gonna leave those for now. <clears throat> now I'm gonna make the bow, and I'm not good at making bows, so this could take a minute. <laughs> um, then I have to figure out how to attach it to that, so. All right. I originally was gonna talk through this whole process as you can see here, but I decided to do a voiceover because it was just taking too long. I want a simple bow. I didn't want a bow with five or six loops in it. I didn't want anything super magnificent. I didn't want the bow to be the center of attraction. I just wanted it to add a little something something to the wreath if that makes any sense so i just wanted a simple bow so um because it doesn't have any wiring it's very floppy um, i'm gonna go ahead and and do the bow like a normal you know uh bow with two loops just like you would tie your shoe no big deal but i'm using a tie i'm using um, a uh, string to tie it and I'm gonna get it up on the wreath and I'm gonna attach to the wreath. I'm gonna get it up onto the hood vent so I can see how it lays. And then I end up gluing the two ears to the plates and you'll see in just a minute if that makes any sense. But I just wanted to let you know, I didn't want the bow to be the center of attraction like it is on most uh, every other wreath that you see. Okay, so here's what I ended up doing. I hung it up. I'm loving this, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. But I hung it up and I put a little bit of glue to hold this one in place and this one, I used the E6000. And of course that has to dry, right? So I think I'm gonna crumble up some of this blue and stick it inside. It would have been easier to find a um, wired <laughs> a wired bow, but I loved this. It's so frilly and beautiful, so I'm working with it. Um, and then I'm, I was contemplating having these hang down, but they cover the plates up. So I'm gonna wait until this dries. I'm gonna let this dry for a few hours, and then we'll get it hung up, and, um, and then I'll decide if I want to cut these once it's hanging up. But look at that, you guys. Is she not beautiful? Oh, hey, you guys, here she is. Oh my gosh, she's beautiful. Oh, okay. So I decided I'm going to live. Well, I'm going to cut this tail. I want them to be a little bit, a little bit more even. <laughs> but I love her she looks so beautiful up here i love the whimsy of the moss just kind of peeking out now i don't have the plate hooks on there um but i will get those on there tomorrow but look at it it's just gorgeous I mean, look oh so pretty just gorgeous I have some groceries I have to put away over here. A little bit of a tidying up I need to do. But oh my gosh, you guys, it is beautiful. I love it. Love it so much. Okay, that is the first decor for spring of 2024. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope that I gave you some inspiration to do something in your home that you're gonna love forever and take chances. And even if you don't know how to do something really well, then give it a try anyways and see what you come up with. we we'll talk to you guys about the, let me show you. When I made this, I made it on the table because <laughs> I don't sew. So this side right here goes over here. So I need to like, you know what I mean? Like switch it around, pull it, and figure out how it is, but I haven't undecorated it to do that. So I just wanna let you know because it was very apparent in the video and you know, whatever. But I'm also, also thinking 
I love the blue. I love how this looks, but what if I found a second tablecloth already made? It doesn't have to drape to the bottom because I've already got that taken care of that hangs about to here and just adds a little bit more whimsy. I don't know. I'm gonna look around, see what I can find, but for now, this is looking really good, but I just wanted to touch on why <laughs> I need to like shift the tablecloth and figure out which side, because when I took it off, I didn't mark it. Like this is the side, you know what I mean? This side goes here, this side goes there. So I think I need to take everything off and completely flip it around. Also, I found this beautiful Broyhill chair at the thrift store. It was $17 and half off. I got half off because my points. I love the detail in it. And I'm gonna recover the cushion eventually. I don't, when I, when I run across the fabric I love, I'll know it and I'll buy it. But I brought this table in from my bedroom to create like a little seating area right here, a little vignette. So we'll see how I, you know, style that. But I love <clears throat> all the detail in this chair. It's so beautiful. I mean, it's got a lot of detail in it. And I just knew that I had to have it. And that, you know, having extra seating in your home, you know, all over, just dotted around. You can pull chairs. I can use this chair here in my dining space. And, you know, we can pull it into the living room. Ernie sat here the other day and put his shoes on um, before he left. <laughs> so I think it's going to be a really sweet little spot to play with. So... Anyway, I've got some housework to do, so I'm going to have to let you guys go. Like I said, I hope that today's video was inspiring and motivating for you guys. That is what I'm doing this for. I hope that you guys got a great idea with this here and with my little vignette that I created. Thanks so much for watching till the end, guys. And like always, make sure to leave me a comment, give this video a thumbs up, and share this video with people that you might think would enjoy this type of content. Also, leaving me a comment is a really big deal because that lets YouTube know that you guys are liking the videos and they will push it out to other people who enjoy this type of content. So I appreciate it when you guys do that. Anyways, we will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.